Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me Nikita and in today's video, we will be talking about a really important topic which I think confused me when I was looking at applying for jobs in the NHS or just generally in the UK. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing all about the different kinds of jobs that you have available at each band level and which job do you think you would be suitable for? For example, which band do you think you should be applying for jobs for? And if you are interested in this content, please do not forget to watch this video to the end. So right before we begin this video, some people in the comment section of my previous videos have asked me, Nikita, when you say bands, do you mean the IELTS bands? That's band 5, band 6.5 in writing or things like that. And the simple answer to this is no. So when I say bands, what I essentially mean is in the NHS, the work system or the hierarchy of work is structured in a way such that all of the junior physiotherapists or occupational therapists or no matter what healthcare professional you are, for example, nurses are characterized in a certain level until the higher ranks. So band fives are those who have just graduated or have just received their licensing. Then you have band six, then you have a higher band seven, and then you have band eight and nine, which are managerial roles for managing a particular team within the particular trust in the NHS. Now, you also need to understand that these different band systems are very important because the roles and responsibilities under each of the band levels are very different. For example, as a band five, your main role would be just being able to see clinical patients. Whereas as a band six, your role could also involve supervising some of the band fours or the band five physiotherapists, occupational therapists, nurses or radiographers, or even maybe helping your band sevens in conducting a group or some mentorship. And as a band seven and a band eight, there are several more responsibilities that add on from a managerial point of view, which can be even in terms of resource allocation, quality improvement projects, auditing, and also triaging and seeing who gets this particular case or which particular person should be treating this case. So as you can see that from a lower band, which has very minimal responsibilities in terms of management, the higher bands focus more on the managerial responsibilities or the managerial side of managing a team within a particular NHS trust. So now, obviously, the next question that many of y'all would ask me was, Oh, Nikita, all of these roles and responsibilities is fine, but what do you think is the pay for all of this? And what do you think is the pay that I would be getting if I join a particular band five level or a band six level role? And in order to answer this, I'm going to recommend that you definitely check out this video that I'm going to be linking right now above, where I've explained all of the different banding levels within the NHS with the pays at each pay point level. So that's right. In the NHS, we have pay increments at each pay point level. So if you've not checked that out, I highly recommend you check out this video so that you have an understanding of what your pay is going to be like at every particular band and at every particular pay point level. And finally, coming down to the most, most important thing about this video, which is to identify what particular band level should you be applying for as an international graduate or as an international healthcare worker. Now, again, when you see different job roles and different band roles, that is band five nurse, band seven physiotherapist, you are quite confused. And in today's video, I'm going to be able to break this down for you. So the first most important thing that you need to consider is the job itself and the person specifications. Now, each job in the NHS, when it is advertised on the NHS website or the track jobs website as an associated job description and a person specification document that is linked to this particular job. Now, I can't emphasize as how important this is to read these particular documents before you even apply for a job. Now, if you are confused about what are these documents and where do you find them, I'm going to definitely recommend that you check out this video that I've created previously. And I'm going to leave the link for that right now above just so that you know where you can find these documents and how you you can use it while you are identifying a job but when i say that you need to read the person specifications very clearly what i mean is the person specifications actually gives you a list of responsibilities that the hiring manager or that a band-aid for that particular team is going to be looking for in you so if you feel that you have met all of the job requirements and you feel that you are a great fit for this job because you've completed most of the job responsibilities in your previous roles that would be a good sign for you to go ahead and complete this particular job application because it would say that you have higher chances of being selected for that particular role. Now, obviously, each of the person specifications would have different requirements. So there are two basic categories of requirements. You have the essential requirements and then you have the desirable requirements. 
So the essential requirements are something that each manager or each hiring manager would definitely look for in the person when they apply for a job. For example, let's just consider a band five post in the community for a particular occupational therapist. Now a band five role, what is the most essential requirement is that you need to be licensed with the HCPC. Now, if you know what the HCPC is, that is brilliant because you are on the right path to become a healthcare professional in the UK. But if you do not know what it is, do not stress. I've made a couple of videos on it and you can definitely check them out via the link mentioned right now above. But for a band five, the HCPC is essentially the most important requirement that you should have because that enables you to practice as a healthcare professional in the UK. So the one of the biggest essential criteria for a band five role would obviously be to have your HCPC license. Whereas some of the desirable criteria, especially because it's a community occupational therapist role would be that you should be able to drive around in the particular location or within the particular community. But like I said, this is desirable. They don't really want everybody to be able to drive. But if you are able to drive, it obviously gives you a plus point. But they would not reject your application just because you don't know to drive, if you know what I mean. So my first recommendation for all of you out there looking out for roles is check the person specification and the job description to identify what are the essential and the desirable criteria and see if you meet them. Because if you meet them, you stand a higher chance of being shortlisted for that particular job. Now, the second thing that you need to consider when you think about the different banding system within the NHS is the experience that you bring to a table. Now, for example, many of us would have just basic experience being graduates from say Bachelor of Physiotherapy, Bachelor of Occupational Therapy, BSc Nursing and then the most important kind of jobs that we would be able to apply for would be band 5 level jobs because they are the entry level jobs for any particular profession. And as you move upwards, for example, as you move to a band 7 level, you would be expected to do some managerial responsibilities along with the clinical loads from the lower band levels, for example, for a band 5 or a band 6 level. So the managerial responsibilities would be managing difficult patients, having conflict resolution skills, supervising and mentoring the junior staff within your team, or even triaging and managing team resources at any given point of time to support your band 8 or a band 9. Now, as you can see that these band seven or band eight level roles are more complex. And for example, a junior staff, for example, even if I was a band five physiotherapist, I wouldn't know how to allocate these resources or how to talk to a patient or a family, especially if they want to pursue a complaint. So band seven level roles are more related to person management. And therefore, I think that once you have more experience as a band five or a band six level, only then would you consider yourself ready to be a band seven physiotherapist, a band seven occupational therapist or any other healthcare professional at a band seven level. And the third thing that many recruiting managers or many hiring managers would look at is the number of years of experience that you have, because that roughly speaks about the complexity of the cases that you've worked with. So for example, again, at a junior physiotherapist level, for example, a band five level, we wouldn't expect you to have a lot of complexity in the types of cases that you are being working with. Whereas at a band six level, say you've completed one or two years of work experience and you have a good range of treatment available to you, but you are also able to assess more complex conditions that would make you eligible to apply for a band six role. And similarly for a band seven level, say, you know, you've had clinical experience, you have a vast knowledge about the different conditions out there or different treatment interventions that are out there, but you are also able to now manage people. You are also able to take on some team responsibilities. And that means that you are now ready to be a band seven level uh, physiotherapist or an occupational therapist, maybe six years or five years after being or starting at a band five level. But again, like I said, these time scales are not written in stone and people obviously do progress as and when these job opportunities arise. So I just want to say that these time scales, you know, for example, a band five is somebody who's just graduated within two years, you become a band six within five years, you become a band seven and so on and so forth are very rough and they are um, very personal. It doesn't have to be for everybody. You obviously make your own path. So definitely believe in your dreams. And I think that they are the things that, that can get you to UK. So definitely these are not the timelines or the timescales for all of you. So do not be stressed at any point of time. If you feel you are ready and you want to progress to the next band or you want to move ahead in your career within the NHS or even in the private sector in the UK, feel free, trust your abilities and go ahead and apply for that higher level job when you feel you are ready.
But that's it from today's video and I hope that you found it really helpful and if you did, please do not forget to hit the thumbs up button or the like button for this video. Please share it with all of your friends and colleagues looking to come to the UK and please do not forget to subscribe. Take care you all. Bye-bye.